Hello my friends and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. It's hard to change a culture. It's hard to uh, change a mentality. Uh, and in every nation has its particularities. It has its own uh, way of seeing uh, the world and acting upon uh, that uh, worldview. In this case I'm going to talk about Romania. And I was born in Romania, I lived a big chunk of my life in uh, Romania and uh, I decided that um, that uh, beautiful culture uh, doesn't fit me much. So here I am outside of Romania. So I'm, I can't say that I don't really know how uh, in general Romania, Romanians or um, political class of Romania thinks and acts. You just have to look at uh, its history and you figure out uh, the ins and outs. In this case we have a little problem that uh, a little circumstance that again reveals the Romanian mentality and I'm not here to bash them even though I will uh, speak negatively about it because uh, the actions are negative. So I'm going to look at them and see how Romanians deal with adversity now, 20 years ago, 40 years ago and so on. So maybe you know that uh, the European Union is European Union and it has Schengen states. Those are in, within the European Union as a political entity. They have an economic entity where they use, they use the euro as the currency. They don't use the German marks, they don't use the francs, they don't use the shillings or whatever. They use the euro and they have other connection, economic connection between the countries. It's called Schengen states. And obviously they don't have borders and all that. They're closer to one another. But you are in the European Union, you have some facilities, you know, a bit uh, advantages. Romania is in uh, the European Union, but it's not in the Schengen states. Okay. Um, in order to become a Schengen uh, state member, member state, you have to fulfill a certain kind of um, requirements. So if you want to get into candy shop, you have to pay first and then you go over there and you do whatever you want, I guess. So the same is here. In order to be in Schengen, you have to uh, meet certain requirements. Romania was supposed to meet certain requirements um, with the goal of uh, joining the Schengen um, area by 2023. The information that I have right now uh, is from Romanian newspapers, Romanian uh, media outlets and people I spoke from Romania who live in Romania at the moment. And uh, obviously I have other sources where I see how Romanians see the situation right now. Romania was rejected by Austria. So Austria said no, Romania will not, we will veto Romania's membership, uh, you know, acceptance or whatever. They will not, will not accept Romania to be part of Schengen. Austria. Now there has to be an uh, unanimity in the vote in order for Romania to uh, join Schengen state. The problem is this, there are three, three countries that are on the list to become new member Schengen states and that is Romania that I mentioned, Bulgaria and Croatia, right? Three countries, they're all in the Balkan area. Austria opposes Romania's and Bulgaria's Schengen membership, but not Croatia's. So Croatia is okay, Romania and Bulgaria is not, they are not okay. And you say, well, well, what happened? Well, the, the, the how should I put it? The uh, obvious question will be, what did you do, Romania? Or what didn't you do? Well, Romanians think that they did everything okay and they deserve to get in. Well, I don't know if they did everything they need because about uh, a week ago or two weeks ago, the European Union said, yes, Romania, you met the requirements. You met the requirements of, um, you know, um, how do you call that, uh, corruption and you fought corruption and you check mark things. Romania says, well, we deserve to get in. So let us in. You depend on others to de determine your fate. That's a Romanian characteristic, seems like. Um, so Austria said, no, for our safety, for our security and with immigration, we can't uh, vote for Romania and Bulgaria. Now Romanians are huffing and puffing. Oh my God, again, the Austrians. And they give us, 
or gave, or gave uh, the Romanians all kinds of ju justifications that I read in the newspapers and people told me what they listened to the um, television telling them. So this is how the story goes. Austria doesn't like Romanian. The Austrians don't like Romanians. That's how uh, uh, this is the, the thing that they are, you know, uh, xenophobic. That's the first thing. All right. Might be, might not be. Anyway, we know we, the Romanians, know by their statements, the Western countries, they look down on the Eastern European countries and the Balkan states as a kind of like semi uh, civilized, uh, you know, knuckle draggers, you know, or ball, ball rollers, something like that. Uh, we understand that and uh, sometimes for good reason because uh, our of our behavior our i'm going to put myself in that because i've been born over there and been over there but our uh, behavior but they're not angels either okay so uh, that's another thing that they, they don't see they fail to see but let's go to to this issue so romania says well because austrians are as they are and then they say well because austrians like to go on the adriatic sea in croatia to spend their summer, you know, to swim and go over there, but not to Romania. So that, that is why they want that. Well, could be, but do you think that's the main thing? Now, do you think it's just because uh, it's a beautiful Adriatic Sea over there and the uh, sands and the beaches? Romania has beautiful, uh, uh, used to, well, at least I knew they had, I don't know if they're still over there. Maybe it's the treatment they receive over there. Maybe there's the amenities, maybe it's the, I don't know, the services as i said anyway they, they don't want romanians the romanians are again begging this is what i don't like about romanians begging you know to be accepted this is an attitude that romanians don't have or most romanians that i they don't have you know what i'm gonna do it myself and i don't give a fuck about you i'm gonna do whatever it's good for me and i'm gonna i'm not gonna wait for you to accept me anywhere i have to become strong and independent in that in, in that position when it's going to be I who will determine your fate, not you determining my fate. But Romanians are, oh, you know what? And I'm going to give you an analogy, like a lady of the night or a prostitute or a whore. That's the way they are, paid ones. They say, okay, we, I want money and he wants sex. All right, well, hey, are we going to do it? Oh, yeah, we're going to do it. How much? Yeah, I'm going to pay you this. Okay, but I'm going to pay you at the end. All right, so the lady of the night gets anything, any abuse the customer would like. All right, so after the whole thing, she is all wasted and she did everything possible to be his, uh, you know, whore. And at the end, he's not paying. Now, this is where Romania is. Romania is in that position where she needs money. So she needs someone else because they can't make it. They, cho they choose to be as they are, beggars. Instead of having a strong country, staying strong economy, independent economy, and do not need Schengen. Why do you need Schengen? Because your impotence. That's what it is. So then you allow Austria, a country of what? I don't even know if it's, it's like 9 or 10 million people, I think it is, Austria. Small country that dictates a lot of shit. Okay? Tell Romania, uh, we used to be 24 million, now it's like 17 because a lot of people uh, did like I did bye bye I'm not staying with you guys you can stay over there and fuck yourselves okay and then you see what's going on the same attitude It's because we are good but they please let us please please allow us please get us in that mentality of a slave now let me tell you how how things work in, in real life do you think someone knocks at your door and say hey Emil Kosman you want to be the CEO or you want to be member of this important group um let me see no it doesn't work that way you will be invited to join a group if they see that you deserve or you have something that they can benefit out of you have a quality right you don't have to be only uh 17 million of slaves working for them or uh, allowing your country to, to be plundered by their companies that's not enough that's not enough even if you work the whole night as that uh, that lady of the night that i told you even if you worked hard 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 you know they will just do it and not pay you so you have to respect yourself in the first place you have to be better stronger and then they will come and beg you to join you don't have to beg to be accepted in but this is the mentality since 1989 after the 
Ceausescu's dictatorship was uh, helped to, go to be gone, which was a good thing. All right. And after that, oh, everybody was shush. Everybody, Europe is coming. This was the word. I hated it. I hate it. Hey, we have to get back into Europe. Get back into Europe. Like, where are you now? On the moon or something? This was the mentality was television was telling me and everybody else and the politicians. Like, hey, be a nice whore. Wash your little things and get uh, ready whenever the European weasels come over to fuck you hard and go and be okay with that. And maybe they will give you a candy after that. And they give us a candy after that after use and abuse. So that's how things operate. And I hated that mentality of some Romanians, but that mentality became the mainstream, or at least was on the television, on the political arena, that was it. If you had someone who said, no man, no, we should become stronger in the first place. And then we'll see, we're gonna, oh my God, you are with Russia. Immediately, or you are a communist, or you are an extremist. These were the words, like here exactly like here. Why? Because we are human and people with low IQ must be in a, of a certain kind of people. And not only that, weasels, self-interest. So this is what happened over there. The same mentality is right now. Instead of looking at themselves and Romanians and say, you know what? Maybe we don't deserve to get over there. And why, why do we beg in the first place? That would be my question. Why are we in a begging position? Why are we not in a dictating position? Because we're weak. Weak. That's the word. Weak. Become stronger. Everybody wants to associate themselves with you. You're weak. Don't invite him. And for good reason. And uh, when, you did, when you decide to change a mentality and start working towards achieving strength and independence, then you can maybe uh, see if you want to go into the European Union when they will call you. Hey, uh, Romania, do, would you like to? Uh, and besides, we're going to give you a sign-in bonus. How about that? They didn't even, even have this mentality that it's possible to happen. They're not raised like that. They're a mentality of slaves. Slaves. Not all Romania, but enough members to dictate the whole culture over there. Oh, be nice. Maybe they're going to... I'm here. Can you please... No, don't let them choose you. Get yourself in the position to choose them or uh, to say, oh, I'm getting you or I'm not getting you. No, I don't want to be with you today. Self-respect. Well, those guys uh, died in the Second World War, died in the First World War, died in all these wars against invading the... the, the, the uh, anyway, uh, our, our culture, Romanian culture, got its members cut off and the weasels uh, procreated more, you know, how do you call it, uh, out uh, birth the stronger segments of the population or, I'm not going to say it, Anyway, you got the point. So yes, I'm very irritated because I see the same mentality and I see this mentality coming from people that I love, people that I know, friends, acquaintances, relatives. Oh, maybe, okay, well, maybe you deserve uh, what you got. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.